Welcome to Kevin Makes Cool Things. I'm Kevin, and this is version two of Baruka's Dagger from the solo leveling manhwa. I originally made Baruka's Dagger around a year ago. It was my biggest project up to that point, and it still has more views than all of my other videos combined. I'm doing a challenge to make all of the solo leveling daggers, so I decided to try redoing it with Blender. If you haven't watched the original video, here are the highlights. I made the original version in OpenSCAD, which was not the right software to use. This was generated using a bunch of for loops and sine curves. It was an amusing challenge at the time, but Blender is a much better fit for this. I tried to figure out how large the dagger should be based on Baruka's hands. I didn't realize at the time that he was drawn with four joints in his finger, which made for some weird math and a lot of frustration. Version 1 turned out pretty well, but there was definitely room for improvement. I wasn't happy with how the hilt came out, so I was looking forward to remaking this. Normally I'd start by creating an image of what I'm trying to model so I could work off of it in Blender. This time I could skip that step because I had already made this previously. I imported a low quality render of the dagger because my laptop still isn't powerful enough to render the entire thing in OpenSCAD and got started. I started by creating a plane for the blade. Unlike the last two daggers, there are no serrations or crazy teeth on this one, which made it a lot easier. After creating the plane, I extruded it and used a subdivision surface modifier to round selected edges. I'm not creating a sharp edge for this blade because it doesn't need one and things are a lot easier without it. Eventually, I did mirror this to create the full blade. The handle started with a cylinder. I moved the points around to create this repeating pattern, which I think is supposed to look like something wrapped around the metal of the handle. I used a trick here, which might not be the best way to do this, but it worked for me. I would extrude a set of these points, then without moving them, I would immediately scale them down. Then I would extrude that set of points down about four millimeters. Then extrude another set of points, and without moving it, I would scale it up again. This created these nice sets of grooves. As I went down the handle, I adjusted the rotation to give it that nice curve. Thanks to the subdivision surface modifier on the handle, this curved nicely, and small mistakes didn't really matter. Next, I cleaned up the blade. I spent a lot of time getting things to angle properly at the points. Sometimes the subdivision surface modifier will create this tugging effect, which I absolutely hate. I'm not sure why it happens, but I found that recreating parts of the mesh will tend to fix it. I wrapped up the first session by creating this spike on the bottom of the handle. Session 2 was all about the hilt, which was the part I was least happy with on the original dagger. I didn't even use the original model as a reference, and instead imported some images into Blender and worked off of those. It took me two attempts to get this right. It was a lot of tweaking meshes and trying to get the right mix of curves and sharp edges. Overall, I like the design I went for, especially on the blade. The piece on the handle isn't perfect, and I wish I'd gone with some nice crisp edges. This is something I'll talk about more when I'm doing the painting. This model is already a lot better than the last version but I could probably still improve it further if I tried again in another year's time. Overall, this took around six hours between two sessions, which is crazy considering how long it took me to make the original version in OpenSCAD. I divided this up like I did the other daggers. I overlapped it with cubes and did an intersection, creating perfect sections for printing. Afterwards, I printed this and pulled off all the supports. I used a difference modifier to cut in some small cylindrical holes so I could put in sections of nails between the pieces and help keep them aligned during gluing. The holes closed up a bit during printing, so I drilled them out. I attached the pieces together with two-part epoxy. I couldn't really get clamps around the handle, so I tried using rubber bands instead. It worked great, and I'll definitely be doing that again in future. Like usual, I managed to drop this and break some pieces off so there was another round of gluing. What happened is I was trying out my new Ryobi multi-tool with a mouse sander attachment because I wanted to see how it would work on the flat of the blade. I didn't have much experience with this tool, and it was less than 20 degrees in my garage when I was doing this, so my hands were a little sluggish. 
I slipped up and chose to hold on to the expensive power tool, which is a decision I stand by. I did a rough job sanding this with my Dremel tool, and then moved on to wood filler. I use clay sculpting tools to help me apply this, which are great for getting it into the weirdly shaped little areas, but also cut down on the overall amount I need. After this had dried, I went back and sanded this all by hand. The only area I couldn't access was the grooves on the handle. I made them larger than I did in the last version, hoping I could get my files in there to clean them up, but I couldn't do much with the angles involved. It's a minor detail, but if you look into the grooves, you can still see the layer lines. I primed this with a spray-on sandable primer, then did some light sanding before moving on to painting. I painted the blade and the grooves with my airbrush. The first blue I applied was too dark, so I had to go back and mix a lighter version. I have messed this up every single time I've tried in the past, and I was sure it was going to be a failure this time too. I actually paused this recording to go and check that I had normal acrylic paint, because I was so sure I wasn't going to be able to use this. It ended up working out really well, and I'm really proud of it. I painted the hilt and the handle with normal acrylic paints. I missed some spots in my first coat, so I did have to go back and repaint the handle. I decided to paint the sides of this piece a darker color, which is shown in this image. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a different color, or just supposed to indicate that this is angled and there's a difference in lighting, but I went for it. The last detail was adding the gold to the hilt. For the squiggly line, I based it off of this picture. This detail is inconsistent, so I kept it as tame as possible, so there was less for me to screw up. Like I mentioned when I was narrating the design, I wish I'd gone for sharper edges here, to better define this area like I did on the blade. What I've done is fine, but if I were doing it again, I would make this change. I added some spray on matte sealer, and this was done. I absolutely love this. I did a lot better than last year, which is really satisfying, but there are still a few places I can improve. Who knows, maybe I'll be remaking this in 2023. So far, I've made three of the solo leveling daggers. Next month, I'll be adding the Demon King's dagger to my collection, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like, so YouTube recommends this to more people. If you want to support the channel and see more of my content, then please subscribe.